What's going on guys? This is going to be a video on MCAT mnemonics focused on the subjects chemistry and physics. Gonna have a bit of organic chemistry in there too. I apologize for um, the video being so late from my previous video on bio biochem but just got kinda distracted and sidetracked with some other things in life you know. So let's just get started. So the first one I got is um, the alpha beta and American figuration. So the way I remember is that alpha is going to be down. So alpha is going to be the, the down configuration. Um, and if you think about alpha, it looks like a little fish. And fish um, swims in the ocean. So it is down because ocean is below um, than the sky is, right? So alpha is a little fishy and it is in the down configuration for the anomeric configuration. And then beta um, is the bird flying up. So it's going to be in the up configuration. And if you look at beta, right? Um, the two, like these two little semicircles, I guess, uh, they look like wings. So beta is a bird flying up, up in the sky. So it is going to be up configuration. Next, total internal reflection occurs for light along or for light going from high index to low index and it is not the other way around. And the way I I remembered it was that a diamond is very very hard, right? It's a very hard material. So it has a very high index of refraction and it diamond captures the light so it has total internal reflection so that's how I remembered it on um, that um, total internal reflection occurs from light from high index to low index and a diamond captures the light and it could do that because it is way harder than the air is the frequency of a sound is associated with this perceived pitch high frequency sounds have high pitches Low frequency sounds that cause resonance near the apex of the basal load membrane are characterized by low pitches. So I don't really have um, any mnemonics for this. The fact that um, what has what pitch, you just kind of like have to know that high frequency have high pitches and low frequency has low pitches. But one thing that I can tell you um, is how do you know like where uh, the sound waves go right um, in the in the ear in the auditory canal so the way you want to think about it is um, this is your auditory canal right right here so low frequency sounds uh, they fall in the apex this is the apex over here okay and so low frequency sounds, they will have long wavelengths. So if it's long wavelength, it's going to be able to travel much farther in the auditory canal. So it's going to fall at the apex. Okay. And vice versa, high frequency sounds, right, with high pitches, they'll have low wavelengths. So they won't be able to travel as far. So they'll be near the front and not near the apex. Okay. So think about it that way. Low frequency has high wavelengths. Um, so or long wavelengths, so they will go farther down the auditory canal by the apex, and vice versa. Um, high frequency will have low wavelengths um, or shorter wavelengths, so they'll be in the front or closer to uh, here. Okay. Next, Roy GBV. If you don't know what that is, that is um, in order from long wavelength to the shortest wavelength and um, also energy wise right so uh, because R is red um, so because R has the longest wavelength it's gonna have the shortest or the lowest uh, frequency and frequency is, is uh, associated with energy okay um, so because E equals HF H is the Planck's constant so um, V violet will have the greatest energy, but the shortest wavelength, and 
um, red is going to have the longest wavelength with the shortest frequency and the lowest energy out of these six. Okay, so just know Roy GBV, and that is the order, right? But one thing I do want you to uh, know, so like think of a little imaginary line uh, after a Y, okay? So red is complementary to green, orange to blue, and yellow to violet. So if you see yellow, that means that violet is getting absorbed. So if you see red, you know that green is getting absorbed. Um, you may see that in um, some questions. So just for you to know, it's good to know. All right, next. The PI increases when a basic residue is added because pKa of basic is high. And no mnemonics for that, just kind of know it. PI is the average of all the pKa's, so the PI will increase, and that is true. So if um, so, you know that PI it is the average of the pKa's, right? So a basic, um, a basic material is going to have higher pKa than an acid. So if you add a basic, or if you add a base, then the PI overall is going to increase. So uh, and just kind of know it. Uh, no mnemonics really for that one. Next. Myopia is a condition in which light rays from distant objects are focused in front of the retina. Myopia can be corrected using diverging lenses which spread the light rays before they reach the eye. A diverging lens creates upright virtual images. So I'm not going to read Hyperpia, um, also because you could just read it yourself, it's pretty much the exact opposite. Um, but I'm going to show you how to remember um, these two conditions. So, this is the normal vision where the light rays fall on the retina. Okay. And then myopia, as you can see, the light rays fall before the retina. Okay. And hyperpia. It falls after, like, you know, like after the retina, not before. So the way I remember it is that hyper means more, okay? So this is more because it is far, like it is after the retina, more, okay? It travels a longer distance more, all right? So if you know the hyper is more, it falls after the retina, then myopia has to be the opposite. It has to fall short, so it has to be before the retina. So just remember it in that way. Okay, um, so V equals C over N. So know that. And the way you want to know this or kind of like have this conceptually in your head is that C, the light of speed, is the speed of light um, in a vacuum, obviously, right? Um, so N here, right? It's going to equal one uh, when it's a vacuum, so the velocity becomes the uh, speed of light. Um, so if your index of, of refraction is higher than it is in a vacuum, like let's say air, right? So n is going to be more than one, and so c over something that's more than one is going to decrease this value. So the velocity is going to decrease correct so what that means is that the velocity is going to decrease in a material that has index of refraction that is high right and that makes sense through this formula but also if you think about it right if a material is dense right then the light waves are going to have a harder time navigating through it so it's going to slow down all right so think about it like a viscous fluid right uh, the, it's going to be much harder for things to move through it because uh, it is much more dense than let's say a vacuum where there is no uh, viscosity so think about it that way all right so the velocity is going to decrease if the index of refraction is higher okay because it is more dense to go through that medium um, and that is also supported by 
this formula. Hopefully that made sense. Another one, just good to know, uh, Le Chatelier, um, when pressure increases in a system, the system favors side with lower moles of gas. All right. This will decrease the entropy because it is favoring towards lesser moles. No mnemonic, just kind of like for you guys to know, because I know I was getting confused over this. Um, so yeah, so just all you have to do is look at the balanced, is look at the balanced uh, chemical equation, and when the pressure increases, look at the coefficient of each element, um, and count those coefficients, and whichever side has lower moles, the the pressure is going to, or the system is going to favor towards that side, okay? And because you're favoring towards the side which has lesser moles, um, then the entropy is going to decrease. One more note, you're only looking at the coefficients before the element. Do not look at the subscripts of the element. So for example, let's say you have 3H2 plus uh, 2O2, right? You're looking at a 3 in the H2, right, the 3H2, and you're looking at the 2 in the 2O2. You're not looking at the subscripts of each element, okay? So for this example, 3H2 plus uh, 2O2, the total moles on that side is going to be 5 moles, okay? So let's say for some reason on the left side, let's say on the reactant side, you have 7 moles, right, because you counted the coefficients. Um, then the system is going to favor to the product side because it's got lesser moles, 5 moles. Okay? And the entropy is going to decrease because the pressure is increasing. All right. um, for cation exchange chromatography, uh, the column retains the cations. And then in anion exchange chromatography, the column retains the anion. It's pretty self-explanatory. But I am going to link a video by Shomu's uh, biology. Um, he will explain it the best uh, because he explained it for me. And I'll just let him um, explain that to you. But yeah, just know that uh, for electric field, electric field points to the right. The electrons being negative feel a force to the left. So uh, for this one, and the formula is F equals QV, uh, QVB sine theta. Um, there's two things that I want to talk about for this one. One, um, when in this formula, right, when you're using this formula, the Q is um, usually positive. So it's a proton that you are calculating for. So, but if for this particular question, if it's an electron that you're counting for, just uh, make this a negative. So just so you know, after you calculate it, it'll be the opposite um, direction because it will be negative so but by default this assumes a proton but when you're doing electron just make just take the negative of the value so it will be the opposite direction um, so that's that and one more thing I was getting confused um, for if like which way the electric field lines go uh, like outwards or inwards for positive and negative the way I uh, remembered it was that if you look at the positive sign, right, uh, these little lines right here, like it's going up and it's going sideways. So same way the electric field line will go outward, it will go up and sideways. Okay, so it's like up and sideways. All right, and then um, for the negatives side, it's the opposite. If the plus is going up and sideways, so it's going outward then the negative side has to uh, have inward um, inward electric field lines. So, all right, next. Uh, bond breaking means that H will be positive because energy needs to be inputted to break the bonds. So just kind of know it. Um, if you need to break the bonds, you need energy to break it. Otherwise, it will not be broken. All right, so H will be positive. All right, and vice versa. If you're bond making, um, then H will be negative because energy is being released. Okay, this is more stable configuration right here uh, because uh, things want to be 
at the lowest energy state possible. So uh, H will be negative because energy is being released, and that is bond making. All right. All right. So uh, for the litmus test, if it is acid, it will turn red. And the way I thought about it was that um, we always think of acid as being very dangerous, and um, red is dangerous, right? And that's the sign that we, or the color that we use usually for danger. So if acid, uh, an acid will go from blue to red on the litmus test, right? And the base will be the other way. It will be uh, going from red to blue. Chixin, um, that is a mnemonic for the degree of unsaturation. Uh, I will link a video for uh, this in the description um, box below. But just for you so you know, this is the formula, right? Chixin, the rings plus the pi bonds equals this formula. And the way I remembered it was that Chixin, like chickens, uh, I don't know why that just kind of like made me like remember C H X N, chicken, chicken, um, so just kind of know that. But I'll definitely link a video down below so you understand this further. And lastly, hydrogen bonds um, only with bond. So just know that. So hydrogen bonds will only bond with chlorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. All right, guys, that's it. Good luck.